um, if you're doing your due diligence as a college coach, you're going to go to as many events and watch as many levels as possible. And we're all, everyone's always looking for that diamond in the rough, you know, that gets overlooked or doesn't get an opportunity to, you know, go to big events and, and be seen. No, that's great. It kind of helps transition to our next part when you're discussing diamond in the rough is what is, um, how do you identify your type of player? What are the qualities you look for when you want to bring uh, a player into your program? Because yeah, on the outside surface, if they look the part athletically, technically, that's one part, but bringing them behind in the uh, locker room, they, are they the team players? Are they uh, hardworking? Are they determined? Are they focused? I know everybody has certain things they overlook and certain things that's a must. What are the key qualities you look in your overall player that fits your program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question because we spend, once you're, you know, a college soccer player, we spend three hours a day, almost every day together for four years. So we have to really like each other because we're going to be on long bus rides and fly together. And, you know, we have to trust that you're doing the right things and that you're committed, um, you know, because ultimately as a college coach, like our jobs depend on 18 year olds making good decisions. Right. So there's a lot more goes into it than just being a good soccer player. Um, but ultimately, you know, when we're trying to identify what do we want in our program? Um, I, I think that, you know, there's players that are very technical, right. And they've got great vision. Um, They've got a really good tactical awareness. They're coachable. They work hard. They do extra, um, you know, and those are fantastic players. Um, but we want to see a player that's got all of that skill set and is also able to execute it stronger and faster and quicker than another player. Because um, ultimately, the way that I look at it is athletes win athletic contests. Soccer is an athletic contest. Women's soccer is an athletic contest. And when you continue to, you know, look at the different levels, um, like the professional players, our women's national team, those women are the, a full player, right? They've got all the tactical awareness that you would need. They're, you know, they're super technical. They, they've got good vision and, you know, they can play in different formations and different systems. They watch the game, but they're also so fast, so strong, uh, and they can execute a skill quicker than other people. And that's ultimately kind of what it comes down to. And, you know, when we're, when we're looking at players, it's really like, who's impacting the game. Um, you, cause you can see 10,000 soccer players that all have a great first touch. Okay. But what are you doing with your first touch? That's winning, winning or losing a game. And our, again, like our jobs as college coaches depend on wins and losses, unfortunately, but like, it can't all be about player development. Obviously we want to make our players better, but we also need players that want to come in that want to compete and want to win. And it can't just be let me go, go through the motions. And so something that I always ask club coaches when I'm, uh, have identified a player, I'll call a club coach and I say, what's her training habits? What is she like in practice? Because that's going to matter once they get here, right? Are you only good in games? Um, I want to know, do you keep score when you do possession exercises? Um, you know, when you're doing fitness with your club team, does she come in first or does she die trying to come in first? Or is she like happy being middle of the pack? Those little details translate to the college game in a big way because it is a, it's a full-time job to play college soccer and you have to really love it and you have to be really, really passionate about it and really committed. So it's not just about kind of going out and performing, you know, on the field and not, you know, on the, on the weekends, right? It's about what's your mentality like Monday through Friday also. Uh, so there's a lot of different things, but ultimately I just, I want someone that's, that's committed, um, that loves the grind uh, and that values, you know, performance improvement that always wants to get better. It's great how you say love the grind. What, what is it that, because I know for some of the listeners that are listening, um, it's easier saying the grind. If you can explain to our players that are in high school that are younger and in club, they feel they know what they're doing when they're grinding. Mm -hmm. To us, like, this is grind. This is difficult. If you can explain to us a day-to-day -day, um, at UC Davis what a hard grind is like to kind of kind of break down of, you know, this is a regiment at a Division One program mm -hmm. that, you know, 
And some players I know personally, and the reason I'm trying to say this is I know players that are talented, that are running circles, everything. But the reason they can't make it into, let's say, from Division One to Pro or at a Pro in MLS to Europe is the day in, day out grind. It's like, man, I just, my butt, I can't do this mentally, emotionally, physically, seven days a week, six days. It's just the, the tempo is too high, the, the fitness, the demand, every league is different. I want to kind of break down when we say love to grind. What is a typical day grind at UC Davis? Oh, well, I, I think it depends at where we're at in terms of like our tactical periodization or where we're at in our season. So, um, you know, being in season versus being in your winter, you know, kind of winter off season or your spring kind of prep for the fall. So it kind of depends. But, um, you know, if we're if we're really in season or we're kind of leading up in that spring season up to, you know, our, our fall competition, um, we're training five days a week. Um, you get typically one game or one day off, um, we're required to give you one day off. So you have to, again, like really show up and compete. Um, uh, I think that there's programs that like to stat practices. And I know that stats aren't necessarily something that you think of with soccer. You think it's like a football or like a basketball, um, kind of, you know, tool, but something, for example, that we stat at UC Davis is we stat like hustle points and grind points. Um, mm. And so what that means is after you lose the ball, do you try to win it back in two seconds or less, or do you have that let down? Um, Cause to me, there's a difference between if you're tracking or you're starting, did you, you know, win a, win an air ball off a of clearance there's, you could win an air ball off a of clearance um, with nobody around you. Right. Or did you win it with traffic? Were there four or five people that you're having to battle off, right? And they're both considered clearances, but they're very different, right? One has like a grind element to it. One has like, I had to fight to, you know, for positioning and knock off a couple players off balance and still get up and find the ball, right? Versus no pressure on the ball. It's, it's the same thing, but it's not. And so those are little things uh, when I think about the grind, like you have to love that kind of stuff. Like you have to love that element of like, I'm doing more than what the minimum is. 